What's up guys? Welcome to the channel. This is Sonora Design and guess what? Today is going to be the best day ever because we are tuning the Ames speakers. <laughs> guys so today we're gonna finally tune the Ames speakers those ones on the back uh, this is video number two we built those on video number one and now we're gonna do fine tuning adjustments and work with filters and check the frequency response and get them to sound amazing for those speakers i use the chr's 120 from mark audio the cabinets are 35.4 liters we get ports two inches in diameter and 2.5 inches long we got a good response but still those drivers are pretty bright meaning they have a lot of highs and mids and because our enclosures are wide we have to work on correcting the baffle and we're going to fix that with filters okay baffle step compensators and notch filters in this case we have a very wide baffle what happens is that we have a loss of bass loudspeaker diffraction loss and baffle step compensation circuit at high frequencies a loudspeaker radiates sound directly forward in half space at low frequencies the sound is not directional and radiates into full space this results in a gradual shift in the frequency response of minus six decibels from the highs to the lows that can be easily fixed with an equalizer or a, a dsp you can just like crank the bass up and fix the curve we're gonna measure the speakers we're gonna get the curve check the points we need to work on and then we're gonna go to the filters let's do it all right guys i set up the whole thing and we're gonna start measuring so we're gonna get first frequency response one meter distance from the microphone to the speaker then i'm gonna do a more like a listening position because the sound's gonna change okay there is always like a sweet spot where you sit in a certain distance from the speakers and you hear it better especially for bass i have my this vintage amplifier i picked this one because i can adjust like bass and treble and then i got REW here, the measuring software that we're gonna use. Let's start taking our curves and see what happened. The enclosures are ready, sealed. I sealed the ports and I used this material inside. It's called, uh, uh, oh God, now I forgot. Mm, that's the sonic barrier. So we added the sonic barrier inside and polyfill. So it sounds better or not. Some people like it. Some people don't like that. I used it and I got good results. So that's our EW. We go to preferences. Okay, we have the sound car calibration. We have the Umic microphone, which is calibrated as well. And we have no audio. <laughs> What's happening? The speaker is not connected. Hot damn it. They are now connected. Is it playing? Oh no, oh no. Yes, it's playing. Let's do it. Sweep. Okay, that's the first curve we got for the frequency response of our Ames speaker. Let's get some smoothing here so we can see the curve kind of a little better. We're gonna go to psychoacoustic and we apply the smoothing and that's the curve we get here. Okay, we're in the garage. Do you guys know already? I mean, ideally, we should be using a, an echoic chamber, but I don't have one. I guess just a few people have one. An echoic chamber is a chamber where the audio just dies. You know, there's no reflection because pretty much everything we hear uh, from a speaker is reflection, reflection from the walls at the ceiling floor we hear a lot of reflection 70 80 percent whatever so if you want to hear the speaker only then you go to an echoic an to an 
anechoic chamber. So we're kind of improvising here. But the thing is that we're gonna adjust the speaker to our environment. So that's our first curve. Okay. What? Okay, so we have the microphone garage one meter. You can see that we have a lot of highs here uh, at 8, kilo, 8 kilohertz, 8.5 kilohertz. We have 86 decibels and I mean, and we have 77. Point eight. It's almost like 10 decibels different, you know, 10 dB. It's a lot. So we're going to try to fix that. Well, we have mids here too. Mids goes to 82. I'm going to add some bass and cut the highs and see what curve do we get, okay? So we got some equalization here on the amplifier and we're going to check that. Let's do it again. Let's see what happened. We apply the same smoothing and guess what? We have less highs, less mids and more bass. So you can adjust your speaker with simple controls, but they're not gonna do it. We're gonna do it like the more complicated way because we like making things and having fun and dealing with coils and capacitors and resistors. That's what we like doing. Let me write it down, garage, one meter EQ. So we're gonna go now to the online calculators for notch filters and uh, the Bethel step compensator. I have all my components here and we're gonna start our filters a few websites that you can get your calculators i'm gonna post the link down below so you guys can access that and calculate your own filters okay so this is like a a, a good start sometimes it doesn't work right away we get keep like testing it i have our induction coils here i have the capacitors and i have resistors so we can build a notch filter okay so notch filter is composed by a coil a capacitor and a resistor baffle loss compensator filter is composed by a coil and a resistor i have like two types of resistors ceramics metal oxide ceramics are cheaper but guess what they don't sound that good so we're we're gonna use the ceramics to try and get the value because I have like more of the ceramics one because it's cheaper. On the final product, we can use the metal oxide ones, okay? Some people complain about the ceramics sound kind of harsh. You know? So we have the metal oxide and we spend a lot of money on that because we want high quality audio, right? I have here, what do we wanna do? We can go to this website, Hi-Fi Audio Design, which is pretty cool. You have a lot of information and I'm gonna post it here so you can access it, okay? So we are gonna have our speaker, our driver impedance, the driver's voice coil inductance. We're gonna go back to CHR120 Mark Audio. I didn't count on that. <laughs> okay, so we get our L1 kilohertz. So we got 0 0.1272. Uh, 0 0.1272. Let's see. Uh, width of the baffle. It's a wide speaker. That's why we're losing bass. And we don't like losing bass. We're going to attenuate like 9 decibels. And we calculate it. Okay, look at the results. 276. 8.4, 14 resistor, that's right. So we have the baffle compensator. We need an 8.4 milliamperes coil that I don't have. I can wire two of them uh, in series. I have three milliamperes. We can get to six plus two. It's gonna be a lot. We have this high frequencies here. So it goes, it's 86 decibels. We, on the base here, we got like 77, 80, it's almost 10 decibels. So we're gonna cut the highs here. And we try, we're try. we gonna try and lower this peak here too. So we have like a difference of like 77 to 82, five decibels, not too bad. But this website is pretty cool because it gives you like the attenuation you're gonna get. It shows your frequency response in the attenuation for each frequency. So if we have uh, a speaker of 8 ohms frequency peak to reduce so we're gonna reduce the peak is around 8.5 kilohertz so we have like 8,000 8.5 sorry uh, required max dumping we're gonna go to like 9 decibels so we calculated we have a filter off 14.5 resistor a capacitor 3.5 
35 and a coil of 0.1 millimeters. Guess what? I have all that or pretty close to that. So we're gonna try that too. It's gonna cut our peak at 8.5. It's gonna cut 8.9 decibels and 9 kilohertz, 8.9. 8.2 and 9.5 so we're gonna have a pretty good attenuation in this area here so that's what we're gonna work on we have our baffle diffraction loss calculator here we're gonna start working with that and we're gonna start measuring right okay for the capacitors we have like the electrolytic uh, I don't have any here but I mean I might have it there it doesn't matter we don't use those okay we use those ones uh, polypropylene capacitors those are like audio grade and uh, they work pretty good they have all different kinds of brands and sizes depends on the, the value and we have the coils coils are the coils <laughs> Just get the ones with low DCR, I guess. They work well. So that's what we're gonna use for our measurements. We have our, our starting uh, setups here. So let's go to the measurements again. All right, let's start connecting our filters and testing them, okay? So we're gonna first start with our notch, our baffle correction. We're gonna try the six milli Henry's and 15 resistor. Okay, and then we try it. We got our first curve. We lowered uh, everything after like a hundred hertz. I don't want it that low. I just, I want it to, to start working here. This is the problem. And this is the problem, okay? Meads at around like 500 to one kilohertz and from 6K to 12K. So that's our problem. We might have to work with two notch filters. So that doesn't work. At least you guys can see how does it work. We really lost like, uh, how much? 80 to, oops, 80. 82 it's kind of like two decibels we asked for nine they gave us two so <laughs> it's all right let's keep trying let's do a notch filter now let's work with the notch filter that we decided to use at eight kilohertz okay so we have 14.5 resistor with a 3.9 because i have 3.9 and a 0 0.1 milli henry so we're gonna get 0 0.1, 3.964. It's hard to have all the components. So get close and we get like a 14, a 15 resistor. Let's do it. Now we got orange, okay. Okay, look at that. We got some attenuation. Uh, we got our peak here at 83, and here we got our peak at 86. Three decibels, yay! <laughs> we can keep doing that forever. So the thing is, it's lowering the whole curve. We want specific frequency to be lowered. Okay, so we go back to our calculator. This one, Hi-Fi Audio Design, which is Kind of my favorite for now and we have our filter here for 680 okay the thing is it's getting all the frequencies around it but the thing is at 400 hertz it, it takes one decibel 2.4 at 450 so we don't want that so we, we have to reduce our spectrum see it's lowering because we just want the six, uh, 680 to be attenuated the most got like 7.8 8.5 at 700 whoa we got like 0 0.5 inductor coil and you get 100 microfarad which i don't have what are we gonna do now i'll have to add a bunch of capacitor let's see <laughs> is that our filter <laughs> Oh yeah too much let me see expand let's try 60 Maybe we do like 1.5. Oh, then it goes too low. Okay, that'll be ideal. We can expand a little bit. Okay. Okay, if you put like 20. Yeah, let's do that. We're gonna go with 1.5, 30 microfarad. Okay, we got here around two to three decibels okay 
Let's do our high frequency now. Let's do 8.3 kilohertz. 8.3, okay, 8 ohms. So let's calculate it. So we have our peak attenuation at 8 kilohertz. 0, 0.2, 0.15, I. Zero, oh, 0 0.08. Oh no, oh no. 0 0.2, 0 0.15, 0 0.08. We're going to use 0 0.1. And we have a 4 microfarad. Let's keep this at 20. So we calculate again. Okay, at 8 kilohertz, we're going to get 10.9 decibels attenuation. Let's make this filter, okay? I don't know if I have it already. I, I don't know if you guys can see it. Look at that. Mm. I'm all hurt, but anyways, ah, life is tough. All right, guys, we got new filters, okay? I just did some tests here and I'm gonna show you. So for now, we have our one meter curve response. We have our step baffle correction, which is this green one, number nine. Let's do it. Look at that, it's lowered a little bit. I don't know if we're gonna use that, okay? So, and then we have, this one is our high high frequency filter we turn it on boom cut a lot great 80 decibels from 86 6 db okay we got it and then we have the mid frequency filter that's the purple one we turn it on okay look at that we got it 77 from it was around here 82 okay five decibels so that's the curve we have. That's the curve with the high frequencies attenuated. And that's the curve with the mid frequencies attenuated. Let's get the curve for both filters combined. Okay, that's the response. So, we got it. Let's put the microphone at listening distance now and get the curve. So, at the end, we forgot about the baffle step compensator. We're just going to use the filters for mids and highs. We can try and lower this high, high end part of it, you know, as a whole, but I think it's too much. So let's focus on our three meters on our listening position. Okay. So it's going to be at around 2.7 meters, which is what? Nine feet, right? Let's do it. Let's get the curve. We need more volume, like a couple clicks more. New curve. Take this off. Okay, that's the curve we got. Maybe it's lowering too much on the mid frequencies here. We wanna like lower our attenuation. So get more mids here, mid bass kind of, like at around 600 hertz. We can work on this little filter a little bit more. Less attenuation. At our listening position, we have a resistor of 10 ohms. Ow! Oh, get a 7, number 7. <clears throat> and compare the curves! Yay, it's so cold! Okay, it's pretty okay. Let's change the color. Blue, it's hard to see. They're entangled. But at the end, we got this curve. It goes, uh, let's say 73, and it goes all the way to 79. So it's like 6 dB variation, kind of. If we test the speakers outside, I think it's gonna get better, okay? But we got our filters. We're gonna use two notch filters. One for super highs and one for mids, okay? That's it. We can start working on our case. I don't want to add the filters inside of the box forever. Forever is a long time. So we're going to make little enclosures for the filters and we're going to use them outside. So as an option, okay? Let's do it because it's looking good. All right, guys, I'm back. And guess what? It's raining a lot in LA. It looks like Blade Runner. Do you remember that? I'm not ready for the rain. I'm never ready for the rain, you know? So I have everything outside. 
and everything got wet. My amplifiers got wet, the acrylics wet, the wood got wet, my shoes are wet, everything is wet. But I love LA, the city of angels. So, guess what? Today, we're gonna make the crossovers, not the crossovers, the filters. I have here our filters. We made them, we test them, and they got approved. Those are the high frequency uh, parallel notch filters that we're gonna use. And that is the mid frequencies parallel notch filter that we're gonna use. Okay, you guys might want to know where do I get those parts? Crossover components. I got them from Parts Express. I'm not sponsored by anyone, but it's easy to get them at Parts Express. They have like all kinds of crossovers and types of coils and I mean everything speakers. Okay, so that's what we're gonna use. We have our connectors. We have like the acrylic. I had those pieces from another project, okay? So I just cut them off and we're gonna use them for our crossover. So we're gonna make like not crossovers. So this is like acrylic. I painted the back in white. Okay, so this is acrylic and it looks pretty. It has some reflection. We're gonna use maple hardwood. Let's go to the make. <laughs> What's up guys? That's it. We have 
our crossover. It's not a crossover, come on. It's a filter. That's gonna hold our acrylic top. So we have the acrylic top. I just finished polishing the acrylic. You guys can see here, or maybe not. Camera, please help. It's not showing. Oh, is that? Yeah, it's here. There are like different ways to polish the acrylic, right? We can burn it, burn the edges, and it's like pretty efficient. The thing is, you always have to sand it. Sand it a lot. You sand with like 220, then you sand it with 400, then you sand it with 800, then you start buffing, or you can like blow torch it. And the thing, it, it gets like polished and beautiful and uh, looking good. So that makes it like pretty nice. And you won't cut your fingers. Usually you cut your fingers if you slide it through the acrylic. So those are the filters. We got the base, we got the top. That's our top. That's the base. We have our components here and we're gonna start assembling it. Inputs here, we have the outputs here. Signal get in, get processed, get out, and guess what? It sounds amazing. Let's plug it in and try it on. All right, guys, so that was our Ames speaker tuning for today. We cut some of the highs, we cut some of the mids, and the speakers sound better. Remember, we can always like keep tuning it forever, okay? Trying to adjust the curve over and over again. We might do that in the future, or even try the mini DSP to equalize it, cause those drivers sound really good, I like it. They're pretty bright, they sound like really uh, detailed, they sound uh, dynamic. They sound um, obtuse, <laughs> they sound, uh, I don't know, they sound good. If you like the content, or if you don't, <laughs> press the like button and subscribe, okay? And let me know what you guys are interested in. We can do everything here in this channel. But that's a place that things happen, we make it happen, all right? So those are the AIM speakers. We're happy and let's go to our next project. Thank you for watching and see you guys soon.